Welcome to the live room here at KEXP. I'm your host, Hans, from listener-powered KEXP 90.3 in Seattle, kxp.org, around the world on streaming mobile apps. And all of this brought to you by good folks like yourself who make gift to this station. Big thanks to everyone who powers the station where music matters. So happy to have with us today real estate. Take it away, y'all. Thanks.
sleep The day becomes the night And I am on some dead end street Feel like I'm going blind The sun is shining through the trees This haunted world is killing me The moon talks to me in my sleep This haunted world is killing me
It's real estate in the live room here, listener-powered KEXP, covering Elton John's Daniel, and uh, also the opening four songs from the new album, Daniel. I love that y'all are leaning into that, too. You had, you had an event, uh, it was a Daniels only, and uh, you, <laughs> you uh, let uh, people come to the show whose name was Daniel or Danny or Daniela or some, some variation. Yes, and you, with uh, guests. Yeah, with, with plus one <laughs> of another name. And, and you opened and closed with that song. That's Who's right. I, whose idea was that? Um, come on, I'm taking I'll hand it to Bleaker. I'll give it to Bleaker. Idea, yeah. Okay. We're, we're extremely committed to the bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, once we thought of the Daniel only show, yeah. it really just, uh, you know, it just all fell into place from there, you know, mm-hmm. you, and, and Elton John's Daniel, dare I say the best Daniel song ever written. And, and, and that probably, it really is a great incredible song. Incredible song. It's beautiful. It's not you know? just that it, you know, it's not just that, uh, it plays into the, uh, no, it's a pleasure to play it actually. Yeah. And when you yeah. actually like learn how to play these extraordinary like hits from the you know great songbook, <laughs> pop songbook of the last hundred years or so, you have even more of an appreciation for how good they are. You and know? So Bleaker, really what's your fun. what's your older brother's name? Oh, I do have a, an older brother named Daniel. So this song, you know, has always hit close to home for me. That's great. Yeah. Cool. And speaking of Daniels, uh, y'all worked with uh, Daniel Tashin, producer, uh, who, of course, worked with Casey Musgraves and uh, Leon Bridges and Munya, some great artists that uh, our listeners have heard. And uh, what, what brought you to him? Um, among, I mean, honestly, it was, it was probably the Casey Musgraves connection. Um, yeah, I mean, the, you know, the, the story is that my, my kids, my daughter, uh, especially one of my daughters, was really into that record. And so we listened to it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I got really into it as well. Um, and so that's kind of how his name initially came up. But uh, yeah, kind of with the whole mission of this record being like making kind of direct, straightforward pop music, like he seemed like a really good uh, direction to go in, good person to work with. Yeah, and, and it worked. It's an amazing record. The new album, the sixth album, Daniel, out now. Uh, my favorite album of the year so far. So I'm so excited to hear oh, those wow, songs. Wow, thank you. Seriously, yeah. It's, really? it's beautiful, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can you say that a little louder for, for all the critics? Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. How far into the year are we? Uh, you know, first that's quarter. true. It's, first it's, quarter. You know, first quarter. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be there at the end. We'll take I can, it. We'll I can take assure it. you. Thank you so much. That's really um, sweet of you to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with Daniel came Nashville, came RCA Studios A, which... You know, just historical spot that Chet Atkins built and everyone from the Monkees to uh, who recorded their Dolly, Be- Beach Boys, B.B. Yeah, B. King, um, and, you know, adjacent to Studio B where Roy Orbison, Bowie, Elvis played, uh, yeah. recorded. And uh, very cool. Like, you guys played Elvis when you were in high school at some band competition. And what what does it mean to come all that way from there uh, to to a studio where Elvis recorded I mean it was it's it's amazing and I mean it's it's also just yeah I mean it's it's always it's always fun making a record and being like where can we go you know which studio are we going to record in next and and uh I don't know it's always been sort of like the like when you envision your future you know as a kid like when you allow yourself to dream of you know making records it's like something like that you're going to be in some incredible something out of a movie um, yeah, it was really special and it felt good to make music there. It made us kind of, it kind of, I feel like lit a fire under us to, I don't know, make something that felt like it was worthy of being made in a room like that. Maybe, you know, what's kind of amazing is that particular room sort of fell into place late in the process. We mm-hmm. knew we wanted to work with Daniel Tashian, who's sort of this consummate, you know, modern Nashville producer. So we, we knew we'd go there to where he lives, but he was like, oh, there's a million studios here. You know, I'll find something. I'm poking around. I'll find something good for us. So it was almost like the studio itself 
was an afterthought and then became such a character mm -hmm. in the recording. Like you, you can't help but feel it walking into a place like that. It's like the hallowed halls, you know? And then of course there's photos of like Willie and Will and in there as you're walking in and, you know, we mentioned Dolly Parton, like Jolene was cut in that room. So yeah. it's just like, and it's not like we like, we need to make our country fraud record. You know, we just wanted to work with Daniel cause we thought he'd be a great producer. And then we wound up in this like incredibly historical place that we, we didn't have time to think about before we got in there that much. Even we just kind of like got to walk in and be like, Oh my gosh. Wow. You know, it was so cool. Yeah. And there's, there's touches of the, I guess, indie politan sound there, you know, a little, little bit of uh, pedal steel. I like the addition of that on this record. That was probably Daniel that brought that. Yeah, it was, we were there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, he was, he was like, what, you know, yeah, it, it worked on a few of the songs and then it was just, yeah, obviously we had access to uh, someone like Justin Shipper who is, uh, yeah, a, a legend. He, yeah, so it was cool to get to work with him and yeah, just. There's this thing that happens in Nashville that none of us knew about. It's like such a company town, like mm -hmm. musical professionalism. You know, we've made records in New York and L.A. And, you know, most people don't. We didn't know. There's this thing called Cartage. This is super nerdy and deep. But it's like he keeps all of his gear stored in like a climate controlled warehouse. And then, you know, people because he's a session guy, right? He's probably doing like one session before lunch, one after, you know, every day, day in, day out. And so his gear shows up you know, at like 10 a.m. before he does and is all professionally set up for him and us coming from the school of like basements in Brooklyn <laughs> and seeing something like this happen, we're like, oh my God, <laughs> you get to just punch a clock and come in. It's kind of funny because like we were thinking about, oh, how amazing this kind of like looks like a job where this guy just gets to go to work and play music. And then he came in and he was like, you know, if you listen to real estate, I wouldn't say that we make weird music, especially like, you know, this record was like, we wanted to be a straight ahead, uh, you know, explore our straight aheadness. And like after he finished, uh, you know, expertly recording, he was like, this is the weirdest record I've played on all year. You know, not meaning that the music is weird, but like, you know, it was like we had this equal novelty mm -hmm. being in it each just other's wasn't presence. Country, you know, like you know. it just was, yeah, he's used to like doing something totally different. So it was really cool for all of us to like have that. Yeah, yeah. And y'all highly influenced, you know, starting in, in bands playing in high school and whatnot from, from classic rock was very much something that, you know, touched you and influenced you, British and American music from, from back in the day. What, what was it about that that inspired you early on and, and still does? I mean, I think, honestly, for me, uh, especially early on when I first started playing music, I didn't, I didn't really grow up list like I didn't really explore the Beatles or you know like until I was in in college. Uh, I came to that stuff kind of by way of secondary influences. Like uh, I was I loved Built to Spill, and you know I, like I, '90s indie rock, which was kind of influenced by the '60s uh, music. Um, so I don't know. I I, I guess, it, but obviously all that stuff is very important to us, um, and. Uh, you know, Beach Boys and things like that. I think there's been, like, an emphasis, like, we've always wanted to, like, chase a sort of timelessness with our sound and not be pinned into a very specific era if we didn't have to be, you know? Like, and so it, in right now, like, that kind of stuff, those touchstones are what sounds kind of timeless to me in a way, just so, like... I guess classic is the word that mm -hmm. you use. So like if there's any influence, it's sort of that is that like we're not sort of interested in chasing any one particular trend, which in music, you know, as we all know, can be quite fleeting. And then like 10 years on, it's like, oh, what about that witch house record that we made? <laughs> well, you, you know? don't want like, your albums to sound weird in 10 years, but it, it ends up happening anyway. It's, it creeps in whether you want it to or not, which is cool. There's always like going to be sonic, sonic, you know, timestamps from... Certainly, whenever you're recording, cyclical things happening yeah. in music, and um, you were you were highly influenced by what you called '90s soft rock in this this album is what I've heard. You know, like you yeah, or like REM. Yeah, I don't know if um, I call it soft rock or like yeah, like kind of radio, radio alt rock. Alt -rock yeah, yeah. Like yeah. No, but I, I totally feel that. I mean, I kind of grew up at that point and listened to the radio constantly, and I'm hearing Freddy Johnston, I'm hearing Matthew Sweet, I'm hearing all these things I loved. Um, as a kid, and then, um, you know, obviously a little bit of acoustic Gila Tango, like Fake Book era, sure. the kind of Neil Young, Harvest Moon, like these these kind of 90s pop things are, are, I'm feeling that palette in the record. Yeah, I mean, if that, you know, speaking of wanting to make things that feel sort of classic to us, like that's the stuff that 
you know, we grew up, I grew up with hearing in my mom's car, like sitting in the backseat of the van and like falling in love with these random songs that you'd hear on the radio, not really even knowing who, what's that one song, uh, Bleaker? I just really love Delamitri, you know, the right time to roll me, you know, like like, that song being like a hit song, Mm -hmm. you know, like what, what a time. Yeah. And there's so many like that, like Duncan Sheik. Yeah. uh, Just these like great melodies, really cool kind of clean guitar work. The laws and like, so anyway, just trying to make, you know, trying to write some songs. There's a lot of incredible pop music in the nineties. For sure. Honestly, if you look toward the empire records soundtrack, Uh (laughs) there's, so much good stuff like uh what's that song till i hear it from you who who wrote that like another one yeah yeah just so many like great kind of and that stuff is funny i think that was maybe like we were talking about like a resurgence of like people looking to like 60s pop songwriting Mm -hmm. and then kind of updating it with a 90s production so maybe it's some kind of like 30 40 years on (laughs) kind of thing you know we're like exploring the next wave of that or something but I mean, I guess not not a ton of indie bands are leaning hard in the '90s right now. I mean, if they are, it's more of the shoegaze, the post rock, sure. post punk kind of thing. So yeah, it, I, I love the pop sensibilities. I mean, always pop sensibilities is what real estate is all about. Um, but uh, I also really love um, Water Underground. Um, a huge fan of Pete and Pete have always been, and I love the video and just the Easter eggs for anyone who has seen that show. Um, you even got Little Pete and Big Pete to come in and, and be in the video. And um, whose idea was that? Uh, I, 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 it must have been, it, as always, I think it was probably Bleeker's idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it was something that we talked about for years before. It find, like we had always kind of fantasized about doing a Pete and Pete video. Um, and we had kind of met uh, Danny Tamborelli over the years. He mm-hmm. grew up kind of close to us in New Jersey. Um, so it always seemed like maybe it could, it, it was, he was accessible and maybe it could possibly happen, but we finally pulled the trigger and asked him. Yeah. Um, the show itself had a profound influence on us, like personally and as a band, I think now it's more obvious than ever, you know, the music in the show, obviously one thing just being so great, but even just the aesthetic and the feel of it. And, um, it was such a cool thing that, that, it actually got to happen. You know, every member of this band is like a tremendous fan of that show. And not only do we get Danny and Mike, you know, the, the original actors from the show, but the um, the creators of the show actually Chris came up with the idea for the treatment and sort oh. of wrote it. So it like had this for them, like sort of family reunion kind of quality, which was really cool to be sort of like a reason for them to do that. You it know? was, yeah, it was really surreal and so much fun making such a fun day shooting that video and yeah just the lead up to it like once we realized it was happening it was just yeah really really cool um yeah y'all have a lot of fun with your videos and i mean that one i think is my favorite so far um and uh yeah maybe maybe you could just get a a reboot going you know you could do the music (laughs) i mean don't don't you know no spoilers it's oh (laughs) hey it might happen all right all right (laughs) hopefully fingers crossed yeah i mean just a, a great show and you know i had so many Incredible musicians involved too. Michael Stipe was on totally. there. Um, Sid Straw, uh, Iggy Pop. Um, obviously, the Mark Mulcahy music is just incredible. The Polaris stuff. Yeah, so. it's deep. I mean, that really like almost every episode has a, a cool cameo from yeah. somebody. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, it's not just a kids show. But have, have you shared it with your kids? Yeah, I mean, what basically uh, once. We yeah. Once the ball was rolling on the video, I was like, "Oh, I should revisit it." And I started watching it. I, I didn't even think to show it to. I have kids that are in you know grade school age, like the age that I was when I was watching it um, as a kid. Uh, but I was like, they wouldn't. They're not gonna like this. Like I didn't know if it was gonna hold up. Um, but then I showed them an episode, and they were they're obsessed. I mean, they still they they really really love it, and they thought it was like the funniest thing they've ever seen. So that was really nice getting to share it with them, and also kind of realizing as an adult, how much, how well it holds up. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, it, it's made for kids, but it's, there's so much in there for everyone. It's really, uh, yeah, well-rounded show. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, what, what has it been like um, becoming uh, family folk and, and being in a band and touring and making records? Um, it makes it more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it makes, yeah, your time becomes more precious. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's um, I mean, on the you know, at the same time, it's cool to get to do stuff like this and like look cool in front of my kids, <laughs> like uh, you know, the Casey Musgraves thing and all that stuff is is you know, they're they think it's cool, but also it yeah, it's not fun to have to travel and um, so yeah, it's it becomes more of a you have to do things more intentionally, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, which obviously you've come a long way from you know recording in in your 
parents' houses, that early, that first record, was, right? You, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's, yeah, we, I mean, the, the, <laughs> it's been, we've only been a band for, I mean, 15 years is a long time, but uh, it also doesn't, it's not really that long of a time, but we've, we've all gone through so many changes in our, you know, in our personal lives and that mm -hmm. kind of time, it's crazy. And uh, y'all have all sorts of cool other projects as well. Um, Alex Bleeker, Freaks, and Tapper's Choice, and you've done solo stuff, or Tapper's Choice, rather. Um, you've done solo albums as well. Any Anything in the horizon? Any other projects? or? I mean, always. You know, yeah. I think uh, Julian's got incredible solo records, too. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's one of the cool things is that, like, we're able to sort of, like, squeeze in the time to do these to, like, other musical ventures. We're all quite active musically and then come together, like, the times where we do come together and join all of our forces and say, like, okay, this is real estate time is, like, extra special, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think, you know... There are definitely different specific plans among all of us in the room to keep the other projects alive as well as this project. And um, I don't know exactly what they are, but I can't, <laughs> and I can't speak for anyone else in the room, but I, but I would anticipate the world of all of us musically like will continue to grow and expand as well as like centrally coalesce around real estate records for like a lot of time to come. We had so much fun making this particular record. Mm -hmm. We're so super proud of it and psyched to be sharing it on the road that it feels like we're like really totally reinvigorated and I can imagine us like getting back in the studio like pretty quickly after the touring cycle for this one is done. It's like there's a there's a kind of like there's a renewed energy which is really great, you know. Definitely. We're in, yeah. I'm I mean I'm def I'm in real estate mode. <laughs> like can't think about anything else right now for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh stopping in and congratulations on 15 years. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thanks thank for you. letting some light shine in on Listener Powered KEXP. Well, thank, thank you, you for, for having us thank back. I think this is our third session over the years that we can recall. And uh, it's Sweet. always great to come here and do these. This is really, it's been great. Really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Sweet. Thank you so much. And uh, thank, you. Thank, thank you for listening. Um, all you out there and watching, uh, if you're interested in supporting sessions like this, you can subscribe, hit the join button right there, and uh, become a channel member and uh, help power this station where music matters, where live music matters. Um, head on over there, kxp.org slash live and support this. And uh, yeah, real estate, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.